Yes, yes, people. Welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. It's done. It's over. Finally, the transfer window is closed. Now it's happened. Well, Isaac Hayden joined Queen's Park Rangers. Mankiw left for Celta Vigo. And we signed that Alfie Harrison, the youngin from Man City. We've talked about him in the podcast. If you want to check that out, go back and listen to it. Every Tuesday, live at 7pm, we do our podcasts. So keep an eye out for those. But in Cummins, first team, zilch. Zero spent, but like a lot of the rest of the Premier League, you know, nothing much has happened unless you Tottenham or West Ham have made a couple of deals. Callum Phillips, by the way. See his uh, debut the other night? Oh, my days. Stinker. Rusty. Maybe one of the reasons we didn't go in. More so because we couldn't afford the loan fee. So we were close in the sense of, you know, pursuing targets. The likes of your Philip Billings, your Onanas, your Morgan Gibbs Whites. But they were just too much in the end. They were too much. We couldn't get th something done. We couldn't get even get a loan deal done. That was the most disappointing thing for me. I think not capitalising on that Saudi Arabian loan market with our connections just to get a midfielder in to cover Joe Linton's injury, then to get a striker in to replace Isaac slash Wilson's ongoing injuries. But it is what it is now. Let's be positive. Let's back the team we've got, get behind them, starting tomorrow at Luton for what we hope is the building of some momentum in what's the really winnable next three fixtures. I say really winnable. Luton Town, Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth However, we've played those three times already this season, away from home, and uh, lost every single one of them. So, not very great, that, is it? Well, Forrest, we lost at home, we've got them away next Saturday. So it's not good, but it's a lot different at home, you'd hope, tomorrow against Luton Town, surely. It's got to be, hasn't it? I mean, Luton at Kenilworth Road are a different beast. You know, nobody wants to go there, walk through Deborah's back garden, see her stinky nick guys on the washing line, Go into your Domino's Pizza Oak stand. It's just, it, no one wants that, right? Loads of teams are feeling there. Liverpool drew there. They beat some big teams there, including us. So, we can forget about the away game at St. James Park tomorrow. 52,000 cheering the boys on. We've got to be smashing these. I'll get into my score prediction at the end. But what we'll do, first of all, is just touch on what Eddie... Oh, not Eddie Howe. Jason Tindall, Mad Dog, took centre stage this morning to replace Eddie Howe at the press conference because Eddie Howe is under the weather. But apparently he reckons he'll be back on the touchline for tomorrow's game against Luton. So get well soon, Eddie. Rest up. And hopefully he'll be ready for 3pm tomorrow. St James's Park is where it waits. Tyndall was asked loads of questions in this day. It was the longest press conference we've had this season. Tyndall time. Loves the line, right? Doesn't he? Eh? What a man. What a bloke. And he was asked loads of them questions about his, his viral moments, to be fair. How viral he is. How... Big he is for being an assistant manager. And he just laughed it off. He just said, it's not to do with me, really. He doesn't intend to do that. He also doesn't intend to rattle the opposition or upset them. He said about Emery not shaking his hand after full time the other day, saying it's something I wouldn't do personally. I would always show respect. But at the end of the day, it's an skin off his nose. So Tyndall, yeah, he was great in the press conference. And I commented on it saying, I think we should make this a regular. You know how Pep does Klopp's press conferences. Pep Linders, his assistant, does Klopp's press conferences in the cup games. I think we should do that with Tyndall and Howe. Little rotation. Swapsies for good and bad cop. That's what I'm talking about. But Tyndall was very good today on form. You can watch the press conference. I'm not going to go into too much of a reaction to it. Now, massively said, apart from obviously him laughing at the My Dog stuff and laughing at the Very Old stuff. And I, he just came across pretty humble and pretty sound, to be fair, Jason Tyndall. Um, I met him before the Gateshead game last year and he was exactly like that then. He was, uh, he was fantastic. Great bloke. So, the main thing that everyone wants to know, though, is the injury news. What's the crack then? Is anybody going to be back for Luton Town? What's going on with Alexander Izak? Four stop for Villa Park. Rumours the other day that he was going to be out for two to four weeks. Could be playing tomorrow, apparently. That's what Tyndall's saying. He could be featured tomorrow. Shocking news. It wasn't good shocking news, but it was a massive shock. Everyone's expecting Izak to miss the next two, three, four, five, maybe even more games. And then he could be tomorrow. I think he'll be on the bench at best. Like, I would not expect... Isaac to start, but the good news is that he's recovered well this week, he's looking good, he's looking promising, and he could be involved. Very surprised at that. Don't rush him back, please, we know that. Don't want to rush him back, no point. Because he's came down a few times a season with this groin issue, so the last thing we need to do is rush him back. Hopefully, we can keep him firmly on the bench in case of an emergency against Luton, if they found themselves in the lead and we need to claw something back. But then also, we could see Callum Wilson on the bench offering his services to do that as well, so... There's a boost. Those two could be on the bench. Also, Harvey Barnes is likely to be on the bench tomorrow, which is fantastic to see. I forgot 
what the bloke looks like. So it's going to be great to see Barnes back. I was a big fan of that sign. I know some people were saying, oh, a bit of a waste of money. That's a bit expensive. What's easy? Not overly sold on him. He got off to a great start of the season, scored against Villa, scored um, pre season and stuff. And then Sheffield United, he came off injured. I really like Cobby Barnes. I've always liked him for years. I think he's a quality player. So I'm looking forward to seeing him back. And I'll give you my tip now. Big Rennie's big tip for tomorrow's game. Bonds to score. I think Bonds will come off the bench and bag. But it's going to be very good to see him back because we are going to need fresh legs and we are going to need those options. Because as it stands, what's looking very likely is that our front three that finished the game against Villa will start the game against Luton. So you'd expect to see Miguel Almiron on the left, Anthony Gordon down the middle and Jacob Juicy Murphy on the right. So I'm happy with that. Listen, they were very good at Villa. We've obviously seen Miggy's cross for Murphy. And, you know, Gordon is the Gordon is the only run, right? So Gordon down the middle. He's been the backup. Eddie Howard said all season, oh, he can be the third choice striker if we need him and everything. I just much prefer him on the flank because of how effective he's been this season from the wing. And he has these stats on the screen now provided to you by SofaScore. Make sure you download SofaScore as well. This video was brought to you by them so you can scan the QR code. Get yourself the SofaScore app downloaded for free and you can use it for free. All the live scores on there, stats, data, everything you need, all in one app on SofaScore. So his stats there, Anthony Gordon, how he ranks amongst wingers in the rest of the Premier League. Obviously his goal contribution there is fantastic, his assists, he's having an unbelievable season so far. And you've got to think, if he carries us on, he's got to be in Gareth Southgate's thoughts. So I want to know from you in the comments, is he going to be good enough to lead the line though as a number nine instead of from the wing? Obviously, with these goals this season, he's really upped these finishing. So, I think yes. And I think, no disrespect to Luton, but at least he's not going leading the line against Man City. Do you know what I mean? So, and then we're at home. So, I, I fancy it. And the wingers to come in, you know, Murphy and Amron played very well the other night. And that was apparently Miggy at 50% after illness, is what Tyndall said today. So, we're looking good. We're still looking good. And we should have enough to do the business with that front three. If they're not, hopefully have the option of bringing on Wilson or Isaac. Well, let's look at the opposition now. And just like Newcastle United, during the week with our impressive win over Aston Villa, Luton had a very impressive win over Brighton and Hove Albion. They got off to a fly, a couple of very early goals, saw them win the game 4-0. But again, they're a different beast at Kenilworth Road. They really are. Away from home, they've had a couple of wins, you know, against the Everton stuff, which has now saw Luton rise out of the relegation zone. So buzzing for them. I'm really glad. I think it's a fantastic story to see Luton Town in the Premier League and I wish them the best, you know, you've got that, the brilliant connection there that they've had there with Tom Luckier, their captain, glad to see him doing well on the pitch the other night before the game, and obviously I think their manager's doing a fantastic job, he really, really is, so well done to them on a, on a really tight budget, you know, signing free players like Ross Barty and that, who are having an unbelievable season as well, he looked really, really good, Townsend, of course he did, scored against us in the, in the reverse fixture, and Adebayo, their striker, could have put a bid in for him, to be fair, he got a hat-trick the other night against Brighton, and he's looked smart. He's always in the right place at the right time, is Adebayo. So they will be dangerous. They will be confident. They'll come here with nothing to lose. A lot of these Luton players will be buzzing to be playing at St. James Park. They would have looked at this one and thought, wow, now we're in the Premier League. This is the grounds that they want to be at. You know, they want to play at the St. James Parks, the Anfields, the Old Traffords. So they'll be, they'll be well up for it with a free hit in their eyes. Now to lose, go for it. And I think with them having that mentality... Could play into our hands as well, though, because I think it will be an open game. I think it'll be end to end, and I'm going for a big, bold 5 1. 5 1. 5 1 prediction for me is what I'm going for. I'm feeling it. I'm getting good vibes from it. Harvey Barnes, with no strike, as we're going to score five goals. Harvey Barnes, yeah? Shaw Hatrick, yeah? Oh, I think Bruno's due one. What, he do, what he's not due, though, is a yellow card, hopefully, because then that would mean he would miss the next two games. But there's my big prediction. I had us to beat 2 1 Villa the other night. Close, was even better than I could have imagined. 3-1 in the end. So I'm going for a win. Honestly, 5-1 would obviously be sensational. Great Saturday that would be. And beforehand, remember, every Saturday or every home match day, shall I say, whatever day of the week it's on, I am at Pumphrey's Bar before the game doing a pre-match chat. So tomorrow from 1.30, I'll be there. So get on to Pumphrey's on the big market. Cheap paints and sensational banter. If I do say so myself. So we'll, uh, we'll wrap things up there, people. I wonder what you think. Heading into the Luton Town game, what do you think the score will be? Drop them in the comments below. Subscribe to my Patreon TV, and I'll see you on the next one.